Hi, this is Gerald Salenti, and here are some of today's trends in the news. Well, that's what I usually do from here, but not today. Today we have with us again, great chef, Marcus Giuliano, who he and his wife, Jamie, have one of the best restaurants anywhere, any place, Aroma Time. And if you have time and you're in upstate New York, you're going to want to go to Ellenville to go to Aroma Time. And I go there when I want the finest of the finest. And, you know, I like to drink. And when I go to Aroma Time, I get the best of the best, not only in food, but in the tastes that I enjoy to have a sip of this and that. And what do we have today, Marcus? <laughs> We're talking cognac today. Uh, Cognac, which is a very popular uh, brown spirit, uh, oh, and cognac. Uh, cognac can be a wonderful thing. Oh, I love cognac. So, of course, this is a local brand. <laughs> because cognac can only come from cognac, France. That's the downfall to this. If it were outside of cognac, France, it would be called brandy. Brandy, yeah. And something interesting enough is we talked, we've talked about Kentucky bourbon. Right. Kentucky, before they were doing bourbon, they were making brandy. Yeah. The first commercial winery in the U.S., I've been told, was in Kentucky. And so to make brandy, to make cognac, Armagnac as well, you need to make wine first. Oh, I didn't know. So you need a winery. You, in this case, this is Ungi Blanc. Ungi Blanc is a grape in here. Now, one of their neighbors is a place called Armagnac. Oh, yeah. Armagnac, same process almost the same process. They're using Ungi Blanc, Follet Blanc, and another grape called Columbard. Columbard. They're using three grapes. Here they're basically using 99% Ungi Blanc. The other ones is a, is a good mixture of the other three. Ah. Armagnac is distilled once. This is distilled twice. Armagnac had its roots in first 100 years. Armagnac beat them to the market by 100 years. I love Armagnac. Uh, yes. Oh. Armagnac is a little bit more body because that one one time distilled as opposed to two so it can really bite you a little more um the same time that cognac was starting their run in history kentucky was making brandy so almost the same era you have the two that were starting up uh now if you were to walk around cognac france you could tell you could spot a cognac storage house the outside of it is covered with black mold a good black mold in the barrels you have what's called is the angel share, which is the evaporation that happens naturally in every spirit that's put in a barrel. Two to four percent is the average spirit that's lost a year in these barrels. The barrels are porous. And when these, this, this angel share emits out of the windows and goes up the side of the building, wow. it makes a wow. unique environment wow. for this friendly black wow. mold. Right. So you can walk down the street and say, there's cognac in that building there. Wow. Interesting, really yeah. interesting. So, Cognac, Armagnac, this is cognac. Now, prior to globalization and the brands coming in, corporations and people being money hungry and greedy, you would take your barrel of spirits and ship it to the new world in the barrel. When it got to the new world, you might know what you were drinking. You might know it's cognac, but you didn't know really who made your cognac. You didn't know who made your rum if it was going the other way because it really wasn't branded properly. So now people want their brand on it. They want to advertise. They want to resell. It's now a big business. So what happens? They stop the oak barrels on the ocean. Ah. The so what did that do? What did that well, you? what happens is you have the oak, the, the whiskey, the rum, whatever it is, in the ocean, shaking, scraping oak constantly, and mellowing it out. Oh. So let's pretend this is an oak barrel on the ocean. It's going to constantly hit oak and wash, wash oak which now helps this get more surface contact with oak. The more surface contact it gets, the quicker it ages, the more it mellows out, may develop more characteristics. Uh -huh. So it's called the allure of the ocean. The allure of the ocean was lost. Wow. Well, Celt Cognac, its name is Celt Tour de Monde, Tour of the World. They've brought back the allure of the ocean. Ah. Oliver Celt, the Celt family, they ship it around the ocean on a cargo ship, it goes, you, the, when you buy this bottle, you'll have a tag on here and it shows you where it went. The 19, 21, how many ever ports of call it went? Wow, It'll show you the out. map and show you where it's gone around the wow. globe. It gets shipped back to the distillery and then put in the bottle wow. and then shipped to its destination. Wow. wow. 
Now, one of the reasons I love dealing with small brands and these non, the, 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 big, the big corporations are not, no, I'm not a fan of. I put this on my menu in 2004. I did a blog post. And who picks it up? Oliver Kelt. I got interviewed for the newspaper, actually, and I was recommending this for Easter. So I was recommending it for some holiday, some feature. Oliver Kelt picked it up, picked up the article from France, wow. sends me an email immediately. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to have my product in your restaurant in New York. Please, if you're ever in the area, come visit us and see what we're doing in the distillery. Now, that's somebody who's proud yeah. of what they're doing. Now, have I, you gone? I have not gone, uh. but I've met Oliver several times because okay. he comes to New York. And I meet him at shows, and he knows who I am. I know who he is, and we have a great conversation. And you know, that's how business is supposed to be done with yeah. relationships, yeah. right? That's well, you know, there's something else that happened that you know, young people have no idea. You know, when I was a, like you mentioned, all the different brands. You know, when I was a young guy, you know, like now, for example, if there's a butcher shop, it's a big deal. You know, two of my uncles may they rest in peace with butchers. You know, but what happened is all the different stores, all the different unique things were killed because they killed the Antitrust Acts, the Robinson Patman Act, Sherman Antitrust Act, Clayton Antitrust Act, that prohibited the bigs from taking it all. Like you take, take for example, the drugstores, CVS and, uh, and Walmarts, uh, Walgreens. So what do you have there? They have about, if you put them together, about eh, 25,000 stores. So now break that up. And imagine 25,000 independently owned drugstores. So young people have no idea that that's the way it used to be. And that's what you do. You bring in, you bring in the uniqueness of the individual, the care, the desire to do the best that they could do, create the best that they could create without the bottom line being the most important thing. Exactly. So let's have a taste of it. Absolutely. Ah, these glasses. These Perfect. Are, so this is the this. He's a Zizzy. My book, what Zizzy gave Honey Boy. May she rest in peace. These are her glasses. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. So now this is a VSOP. Uh -huh. Very special old pail. Okay. There's all kinds of regulations as far as VS, VSOP, and XO. XO oh, being, so that, those are the aging requirements. XO being six years or more. VS being the basic. Uh, everything hits oak. If it has to hit oak by law, they have to put in barrels. So what's the top? The XO? Uh, XO. The and it, there's also some other terms out there that, uh, that they'll put some house terms on. Of course, you have Napoleon. Um, they might say reserve. They might throw some other house terms out there. Uh, this, the neat thing about this is they're a distillery and the bottler. Some of those bigger brands, they're just blenders. So back in the late 1600s, early 1700s, you had a, a, a few people that came from England, Martell, Hennessy. They went there and said, this is the boom, they're blenders. So they take everybody else's spirits that they're being distilled in smaller houses, take it to their place and start blending it to make their brand. Uh -huh. So same thing with champagne. Champagne is fascinating. 80,000 acres of grapes growing in Champagne, the size of Queens, New York. There's 70,000 farmers growing grapes, but only 4,000 labels. Most of them are just adding their grapes into a co-op or selling them off to a bigger guy. So all those big, fancy brands of Champagne you see in the store, they don't really make the Champagne. They're buying grapes, they're buying the juice, they're buying, or they might, they might be buying the finished product and just blending it. They're, they're blenders, they're negotiants, they're, they're not the person who grows the grapes, picks the grapes, and, distills and, the grapes, and bottles it into a bottle. And that's the ones you want. That's the, you, in, in Champagne, it's called grower Champagne. When you go to the store, ask for a grower Champagne. Oh, that's great, I'm gonna do that. So. Oh. Chin chin. Wow, fine, light, and tight. It is so smooth, yeah. delicious. Um, the caramel, uh, a little bit of roasted apple in here. Really some great flavors Ooh. coming through. Boy, this is a nice drink to have on a cool winter day. Everybody who I've turned on to this, because wow. people come in and they ask for the big brands automatically, which isn't their fault. Right, that's what I used to do. 
Now we tell, show them this, we oh, tell this the story. Yeah, this is, People come to us just because we have this. They're like, what is that cognac that I can get nowhere else? I can't get anywhere else. Now, quick story on how I got turned on to this. I was working at a famous hotel resort in Colorado, the Broadmoor. Oh yeah, I've been to Broadmoor. The <sighs> longest running five-star property in America yeah. since 1960. And they're in their fine dining French restaurant. They have a, a cognac trolley, a dessert trolley that comes out afterwards. And they have 20 cognacs on there. My last night working there, I was the, the sous chef. I was the assistant chef in that restaurant. The last night working there, they came to me and thank you for leaving this and that. And they said, would you like a cognac? I said, sure, but I don't know much about cognac. I'm in my early 20s. And they said, taste this one, taste this one, taste this one, taste this one. Oh, wow. And I said, I like this one. They go, funny you should say that. And then what did they pull out? The Celt Tour de Monde, and they explained wow. the process to wow. me. And ever since then, I said, this is the cognac because I experienced it firsthand, mm -hmm. tasting a flight of several different cognacs. So, and again, this is wine first. It's Ungi Blanc grape. It's made into wine, seven, eight percent alcohol. And then the wine is distilled oak aged, and in this case, shipped in oak around the world before it gets into the bottle for its final destination. If you're ever in Cognac, stop it and say hi to Oliver Kelt. Tell him you, tell him you saw us here. Tell him if you've had his Cognac, tell him you've had his Cognac, and please look for, look, I mean, amazing product, amazing story, uh, and a great guy all around. Yeah, and, if, and if you're ever in upstate New York, you want to go to Aroma Time, because you'll have the time of your life and you get the best of the best. Thank you, Marcus. Cheers.